you know, you caught me by surprise today when you're out here calling out Mufasa and Scar as Scar being a good guy. Um, I, I did some, some brief thinking on this today and I don't, I guess I've seen this movie a hundred times. I, I didn't rewatch it today. I don't have all the facts <laughs> in front of me, but I do not ever recall Mufasa telling Simba that he can't go where he was. And, and it's not that like Simba, I'm sorry. It's not that Mufasa was aware that Scar was running the hyenas and the dark lands. I mean, he, to his knowledge, he was just kind of like an outcast. Yeah, but I mean, Simba and Nala went over in that region and Mufasa had to rough up the hyenas. And yeah, but Scar came, wasn't there. I get that, but they came back and it was kind of like a, hey, I told you. And like I said, I mean, transitive property. Don't go to the dark area. They Dude. weren't in the dark area. Yeah, but Scott, you knew. They you weren't knew in the dark area. Right, you're, you're, hey, I'm just saying. They every, weren't. Everyone's out here grilling Scar, man. He had. I just don't like it. It's not <laughs> just Scar. Okay, that's that's the root of the point. So here's here's half the problem. I'm going to assume, based off of what you're saying, you have not seen The Lion Guard, the spinoff TV show that follows the storyline. Scar is a bad guy. Like, he literally raises hell on Simba's children. Just saying. Like, from the dead. <laughs> Brad's like, I'm not about to. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, you know. Long live the king, baby. Long live the king. Uh, you're always promoting these twisted teas on here. I just, I was at the store the other day. I was looking for this maize and blue haze beer that I seen online. And I, they didn't have it, but they did have the Broken Skull beer, which is like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Everybody appreciates a good Stone Cold Steve Austin. And obviously, he's known for drinking beer. So I'm going to try this live on the pod. First time. Here we go. It's incredible. Banger. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was a little worried I wasn't going to like it, but it's great. So let's talk some football. Uh I thought conference weekend or divisional weekend was good. Not great, but good. The game that I thought would be the best game going into the weekends was Cowboys, Cowboys and Niners. And I thought Bengals bills had a potential Bengals bills did not live up to the hype. Cowboys Niners. I thought was pretty good. Um, was there a game that stood out before we start talking about these games? Yeah. The game that stood out was the Eagles giants. <sighs> Okay, we'll get there in a second. Well, no, I, I'm just saying, like, even the Chiefs and the Bengals, it felt like it was a little bit out of reach. Like, the Jags and Bills kind of just got beat, but they were never really in it. Uh, Jags made it close at the end, I guess, but it didn't feel close. Cowboys Niners was pretty much ad as, as advertised a defensive battle where, you know, it was going to be can, who was going to play better at quarterback, fewer mistakes type of thing. But, um, I had Eagles blowout. Uh, I had Eagles blowout, and I thought that meant 13, 13 to 15 points. I did not see a 31-point victory coming out of the Eagles, so that's why it stands out to me. I don't think it was the best game, but that one stood out because it had the lowest viewership because it was over so fast. We can start with that game because I think we're on it. Is it safe to say they played the worst team? I think so. I think that's fair. I think so. Uh, uh, but I will say, because I, I, I'm not going to backtrack on something I believed before the game just because it didn't become true, unless the evidence provided differently. But they did play a divisional opponent. Playing a divisional opponent three times is is very tough. And... The fact that they blew them out two different times and then the third time was just like the ultimate beatdown is super impressive. And I'm not going to backtrack and say that it's not after I said that it would be. So, also, um, go ahead. I, just, I know it was a little bit earlier in the season, but October 23rd, the Giants and Jags played. The Giants won 23 17. Now, that put the Giants at 6-1 and one and dropped the Jags to 2-5. and five. We all know how their seasons kind of kind of flip-flop from beginning to end. But um, 
yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. They did play, yeah, so that is fair. That's a fair. That's a fair argument. I would just, and I think we both would agree. They played today. We're taking Trevor Lawrence and the Jags over the Giants. I think so. Yeah, the, the trajectory of the team's definitely flipped, as you alluded to. Uh, I was impressed by the Eagles. I know you were. We'll talk about Eagles Niners a little bit later because you know we'll we'll talk about the conference games. But I mean, is there anything that stood out that you just thought like? Man, were you were you more impressed by any certain thing or just like this is the Eagles I knew and this is just what you expected? I guess the thing was, so that was Casey's birthday and we got home from Pittsburgh and then we started celebrating her birthday. So, I mean, yeah. I was pretty blitzed by the time this game even came on. And uh, I remember we had people back at the house. We were watching the Jags Chiefs game at like an axe throwing thing. It was a lot of fun, but we get back home. And I just remember, you know, I'm trying to entertain people at the house. We're doing stuff. And every time I look up at the TV, the Eagles are up by another seven points. I just, um, like you said, I, I've, you know, I've seen it with the Steelers, with the Ravens. I've seen it, um, you know, to, to play a team three times, to beat them all three times is one yeah. thing. Maybe it's just a matchup thing, but I don't know. I guess for me, it's I've been on them so long. It's just it's not shocking to me that the Eagles can steamroll a team. I mean, if if you start slow, I mean they're so good. And yeah, to your point, they may have played the worst team, but I just think they're so good. They were my Super Bowl pick before the season. I'm sticking with them, and uh, like I said, 38-7 at any level of a playoff game, especially divisional weekend, is crazy. So let's talk brief fallout from this game. Daniel Jones, I think, is the number one fallout question. Uh, did he play himself out of a roster spot on this Giants team after this game, or can we look at the body of work and think there's something to work with there? I think you can definitely say there's something to work with. Um, the amount of head coaches and offensive coordinators he had um, to see the tr- like what they were able to do with Dayball, and there was just so much that went wrong in this game you can't point to be like, well, if Daniel Jones would have now, I know if the quarterback plays better, maybe the team does, but I just don't think they really played well anywhere. And when you say, okay, well, let's look at who their leading receivers were. Richie James, Saquon Barkley, Matt Breida. That was their leading receivers. Like this team doesn't have many weapons. Yeah. And two of those guys had a combined three catches. Yeah, and they're running backs. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, – it's kind of interesting to me. And he was sacked five times. That didn't help. A mobile quarterback no. was sacked five times. Yeah, yes. they, did, they did themselves no favors. This Eagles team, though, uh, I think the most impressive thing is Jalen Hurts started this game with two touchdown passes. They got a nice lead, and they're like, let's just get to the next round. And they ran the ball. Oh, yeah. They literally, Michigan Wolverine, bullied their way to the end zone the rest of the game. When you knew they were going to run, they still ran it. They ran it at an impressive clip. Uh, Gainwell had nine and a half yards of carry. Sanders had five and a half yards of carry. Scott had five, over five yards of carry. Hertz yeah. was their worst rusher. And Jalen was so effective. It's just like, that's what they do. They just bully you. Yeah. I mean, when you look up at the score and they had 38 points and then Miles Sanders didn't have a hundred yards or a touchdown, AJ Brown under 25 yards, no touchdown. It's like this team has weapons all over the place. I mean, late in the season, they went about a month and a half without Dallas Goddard. I think he's top six tight end in the NFL. Um, you, Devontae Smith could be a one on some teams. I mean, he won the Heisman Trophy. was a top 10. Was he 10, 11? Something like that pick, whatever, wherever he Late. went. He was mid-20s, I think. Oh, no. He was one of the last receivers drafted. Oh, he was in the first, in the half. first round. He's in the first half. Okay. But they, either way, they have, yeah. uh, they, have, they have good players. I did it's think it was impressive that in a, in a playoff game, they went 35 minutes time of possession, 400 yards, and two just shy of 270 on the ground, 26 first downs. Like, it, they were just completely mauling the Giants. And I guess at that point, we'll, we'll talk about what I feel like and you feel like they have a chance against the Niners. But um, that Daniel Jones was the only thing I had as a fallout. We'll talk about the earlier game on that Saturday, Chiefs-Jags. Uh, so... 
Doug Peterson was undefeated against the spread going into this game in the playoffs. And Trevor Lawrence was undefeated on Saturday. It felt like the Jags had a chance. Uh, Patrick Mahomes gets hurt in this game. Chad Henney comes in, Michigan Wolverine, go blue. Comes in, drives 98 yards, I think, for a touchdown. Throws it to Travis Kelsey. Chiefs are just, they're just better than the Jags. That's just really what it comes down to. They're better than the Jags, even with the quarterback play and stuff like that. Um, They have a slight coach advantage. They definitely have a quarterback advantage. They have a roster advantage, I think, for the most part. I think that's fair. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but um, this felt Chiefs all the way. We both predicted Chiefs. Chiefs win by seven. Jags cover. Any initial comments? No, I just think um, – I know you said slight coaching advantage. I, I really like Andy Reid. I think what he's done with the Chiefs has been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, to have Patrick Holmes go down a drive and be able to just not miss a beat with Chad Henney I think was fantastic. Um, I think the Chiefs have some limitations defensively, um, especially if they're going to go up against the Bengals next week. But, I mean, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are two of the best, if not two. Maybe if the NFL players did a rankings, they could come in at one and two. I I mean, they're really that good at football. Um, But, no, I mean, like I said, during the season, you know, sometimes you become numb to the Chiefs winning games. And then it's like, all right, we think the Jags have a chance. And the Chiefs came out and just right down the field. And it was like, oh, crap. I forgot, like, what, these are the Chiefs. Now, some things happened throughout the game, and the Jags were able to keep it close on the road in the divisional game. But the Jags were coming in with a lot of momentum, a lot of momentum, and, the, and that's big in football. The Chiefs were able to neutralize it and go ahead. Um, we'll get to predictions later, but the Chiefs win, and the Chiefs aren't known to cover spreads. They seem to get bigger spreads than they should. I think they get that a lot in the regular season as well. They win. Yep. But it's closer than they think. But that's what good teams do, win close games. Jags kick a field goal late. Um, but it never really – it always felt like the Chiefs. It always felt like the Chiefs. I don't know how much of this game you got to watch. I know you said you were kind of busy Saturday. You are driving home from Pittsburgh and stuff. I thought Trevor Lawrence played good enough to win this game. I did think that his team didn't play a great game throughout the entire game. And then Trevor kind of, unfortunately in that fourth quarter, they were down. He had to try and make things happen. It wasn't able to made some mistakes. Um, there was some drop passes late, some holding. Pa- I just, unfortunately this Jags team just isn't ready, but they will be. I, it, I think the fallout from this game, there's two things. Is tra is, is Patrick Mahomes healthy enough to beat the Bengals this week? And the second thing is, how good is this Jags team in 2023? Personally, I put this on the Facebook page the other day after the game. I mean, he's QB one of Jacksonville for the foreseeable future. And he's QB one of the AFC South for the foreseeable future. So I, I think this division runs through Jacksonville unless Tennessee massively increases or like, I, I, upgrades a roster. I think with the quarterback talent in the AFC, they need a few more defensive pieces. But That's you look fair. at Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and then Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram. They played tremendous the last month and a half, two months of the of the NFL season. And the offense was never in question. The offense was just, you know, they played well. I mean, I know I say they need defensive help, but they threw four picks against the Chargers and were still able to win that game. So, I mean, sometimes you can't rattle yourself and say, look, we lost to Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. But they got some valuable experience, and they're – their mindset is the most rock solid in the AFC South coming in next year. Their goal is we need to get back to the divisional round and we need to win our game. The other teams are like, well, let's see if we can make the playoffs. Let's bounce back. Let's see if we have a quarterback as to where the Jags are on a totally different level. So, um, yeah, the Jags had a quick turnaround a few years ago with their monstrous defense, made it to an AFC championship game. It fell apart quick. This seems much more stable and much more long-term of a build for the Jags. And, you know, I know that the Colts have the fourth overall pick, but they can't seem to get the quarterback right, and if they lose defensive pieces, this roster falls apart. I mean, it's still, even if they 
have a rookie quarterback, you got to favor the Jags in the AFC South next year. And, I mean, you didn't bring it up. I haven't brought it up yet. They get a pretty solid piece on offense next year. They get Calvin Ridley. Yes. They traded for a midseason. It didn't feel like much at the time because it's like, well, he can't play. But 2023, he's their number one wideout right away. Would you agree? If he's on the field, he's their number one. I I think so. There will be questions like, oh, he's missed a year. How is he doing? But Trevor Lawrence has a very good connection with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. Sure, he will have to develop that with Ridley. But Ridley, Kirk, and Zay Jones are all guys that play outside and in the slot. So you have three guys that are going to know every tree from every side. With Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne's a receiving back. This team is a team that is going to be able to sustain drives, I think, especially with those big offensive line additions they had this year. They're able to sustain drives, but this is another team that could one minute, 30 second drive. 68 yards like they're gonna have those explosive players all over it's gonna be fun for doug peterson but this this i think is a destination for free agents florida jacksonville probably gonna win your division you have a nice offense veteran head coach like this is a place players may want to go in the offseason for what it's worth i have heard that jacksonville is a warm green bay though like there's nothing to do in jacksonville for what it's worth I've, well, I've I mean, heard that. It's not. Depends on how committed veterans are to, to yeah. you know, what they want to do, I guess. But I, I, I do think that, like you said, there's a lot of things to like with this roster. Offensive pieces, quarterback, coach. Um, they got pass rushers. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot there. Uh, let's talk about the early game, the the quarterback battle of the weekend. Obviously, Lawrence and Mahomes, no disrespect there, but you, you're getting Josh Allen and you're getting Joe Burrow. Uh, This game was over in the first quarter. Uh, It's, you know, a game's never over at 14-0, but Bill's never even scored 14. Um, Joe Burrow was fantastic. And then they got the running game going, much like the Eagles kind of did. Not to the same blowout effect, but got up and started running the football. And the Bills, unfortunately, just can't get anything established this is a t- totally different bill team that we've seen over the last year and a half uh this is kind of this this year has just been up and down for them i know you have your opinions on the bills what do you got yeah i i just um i was pretty down on this bills team once they reached this round and playing the Bengals, and i've kind of said it because i I just see so much in Josh Allen of what I saw in in Ben Roethlisberger. I know they've been compared a little bit physically. I know Josh Allen's a way more athletic quarterback. But, like, it's just you're going to have good pieces on defense. You're going to have weapons. You're going to be able to be explosive. You're going to win 13, you know, 11 to 13 games a season, no question. But there's going to be times where you're running into Brady or Manning. Mahomes and Burrow are in the division. And they're just they're cleaner and more consistent. I'm not saying on their best day they might not be as good, but th- like their great days are like they're just so much cleaner. And I just feel like it's unfortunate for the Bills. It's unfortunate for Josh Allen, but I just don't think this team will ever be able to compete in the Super Bowl until they get a running game. Uh, you can talk about maybe their pass rush wasn't there, or this player wasn't there. All they have is Josh Allen dropping back, and he either runs it or throws it. They had 11 carries by running backs for 27 yards. Josh Allen had eight for, or um, excuse me, 37 yards. Josh Allen eight for 26 and a touchdown. Like, I just feel like this team is too one-dimensional on offense to be able to compete against the Bengals and Chiefs right now. They're not far away. They're going to be in it every year. Josh Allen is tremendous. I just feel like for them to win the Super Bowl, it's going to have to line up perfect to where they're only going to have to play one of either the Bengals or Chiefs. I don't think this Bills team is ready to beat them both in the postseason. Yeah. Um, so that's why I draw that comparison. Uh, I think the Bills are fantastic watch in the regular season. And, heck, even in the postseason, they're still entertaining. I just think that um, it's tough. I think we, we saw a more turnover-prone Josh Allen with Brian Dayball out. Um, with Brian Dayball, I thought they were a much better team. But, I mean, what say you? 
I mean, you know how I feel about Josh Allen. I I struggled to put this one on him. Uh, there comes a time where you have to kind of look yourself in the mirror as an entire team. Where is this team without Josh Allen? They're not a playoff team. They're not beating the Patriots. They're not beating the Jets. They're not beating the Dub. This team, I could argue, is horrendous without Josh Allen. So it's really hard for me to put this one just on him. I have to look at the grand scheme of things. As you alluded to, we've kind of beaten this dead horse. This team can't run the ball. The leading rusher, eight carries out of Josh Allen for 26 yards. Like, I'm sorry, but you, you were at home in a snowstorm. And I'm not saying you got three or four inches, but it was snowing the whole game. And you can't run the football? It's January. You've had all year to work on this. You've had four years to work on this. And I'm going to move right into the fallout, if you don't mind, and you can, you know, cop, you say what you want after this. But there's a stat that I heard, and it's, it's, it's glaring. It's a glaring stat. There's enough evidence in the history of football. So that's a pretty big sample size. We're, yeah. we're going on 55 years. In the history of football, if a coach and quarterback do not win a Super Bowl together in the first five years of being together, they don't. You know, this was year five. I, I, I don't think – I said this before the weekend. I told you this, and we both agreed the Bengals would win this game, so neither of us were shocked by this outcome. But I was kind of defending Josh Allen where you were writing him off, and you were right, kind of. There was eight coaches this weekend. One was a defensive coach, and that's Sean McDermott. This defense is good. It's a good defense. You gave up 27 points at home to a really good quarterback. 180 rushing yards. I, I'm not going to rip them apart, but yeah, you're right. But this is a pretty good defense year in and year. I think it was top 10 this year. You can't run the ball. Your quarterback, who is known for turnovers early, is turning over the ball again. That's got to come on somebody. I've ripped Bill Belichick apart all year, and that's my favorite coach in the league. I'm going to rip Sean McDermott apart. If you don't have an offensive identity in this league, you can't succeed, period. You can be a defensive coach, but you got to get the right guys in there. Brian Dable was in there, and you let him walk for a head coaching job, which isn't your fault. Who did you replace him with? And I've pounded the table for Joe Brady a lot. He was the guy here. Joe Brady didn't get it done. I just I don't want to make it seem like I'm slaughtering Josh Allen because unfortunately, if I was to do a ranking per se and had Josh Allen as the third best quarterback in the NFL, the two better than him are in his conference. And they're playing that, in the AFC title right, game. And, and that yep. sucks. Yeah. So I I I think I was before you on the Josh Allen rise. You know, everything you that was happening. A thousand percent were. You were like, it, Jeff, you need to come on this. I only think I was coming down sooner is because I was looking at it and I was like, so Josh Allen came in as a project and he had Brian Dayball. And the year he exploded, he got Stefan Diggs. Well, they took Stefan Diggs away and Brian Dayball wasn't the coach. And you know, he 25 for 42, 265 and a pick. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't try and he's not really good. I just think that the Bengals have a running back and they have stud receivers and they have a top 10 defense. The Chiefs have a quarterback, a running game, Andy Reid, an offensive minded head coach, weapons and a top. I think they were a top 10 defense, maybe on the back half, but they were good. And then it's like the Bills, it's like, well, we have this dominant defense. Well, how come your Pro Bowl safety is decapitating your Pro Bowl corner in a playoff game? Like, it just looks like they didn't – everyone's trying too hard. And I think losing Micah Parsons early in the year hurt because he's kind of like the calming voice of the back end as to where Poyer's the, you know, the more rowdy one. So there's tons of questions there, but it's like if the Bills are in – I don't know. You could say if the Bills are in the NFC, but the 49ers and Eagles are pretty good. And I, there's a lot of good teams, and some of the good teams are going to have to lose. And, and you don't want to rip them too hard, but in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. And the Bills have struggled to do that. When it comes to the Chiefs and Bengals in the postseason, they can't beat either of them. And that's what I'm saying. Like that's why I fair. Look, They've had that, one chance at the Bengals. And they lost to the Chiefs last year on a coin flip. 
No, no, and, and I, I get that. I, I I get that. But it's like even on their best day, they're going to overtime. I I just that that's, that's why I look at it. That's why I I don't know, maybe it's because it's a different coin here, but like that's why I always bring it back to me looking at the Steelers for the from like year five to year fifteen of Big Ben or Joe Flacco. You can have a perfect year and be maybe the third best quarterback coming in and you've had a great year you may even be the one or two seed at home but here comes Manning or Brady like how it it just you know I think that's what kept Ben from so many Super Bowls that's what kept Peyton or Brady from even having more is that they just kept playing each other so many times so it's like you know what was that stat it was like 20 years only three four quarterbacks showed up for the AFC it was like three for Big Ben one for Flacco and the rest were Brady and Manning we are eyeing that down right now. It's either Mahomes, Burrow, or Allen. And unfortunately, Allen's going to be that guy that has like one or two blips in 15 years. See, I disagree. Because, be, because of Burrow and Mahomes. I disagree. But we'll, right. it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to argue. Like, because you, you're right right now because you have the evidence. I don't. I'm going prediction. Right. But I, I just it. feel that Josh needs more. Like, he doesn't have the offensive coach. He has a great piece. Stefan Diggs is a dog. After Stefan Diggs, there is a drop-off. Now, Mahomes, this is the one year you can say, well, Jeff, he has Kelsey, and then there's a drop-off. Shushu, Juju Smith-Schuster is his second best, and there's a drop-off there, okay? He's not a number one. He's he's a great two if you got him, and he you know he's a piece. Where you could argue the Bengals maybe have two ones, they at least have a, a, a an A plus and then maybe an A minus. I just feel like the Bills are missing that offensive guy. They really need that. And I, I told you it was going to happen before the the week even started. Like I just knew this defensive coach thing. There's too much evidence behind it. Now you're paying Josh Allen. You need pieces. You need offensive scheme. It, it, this isn't I mean, that- working. This Bills team isn't working. That goes into it, too. I mean, we had Mike Tomlin, a defensive head coach for the Steelers, as to – I guess Bill Belichick's defense. Let's get away from that. I guess the the problem is a great team went into the playoffs last year and lost to a great team. Actually, they lost to the team that lost the Super Bowl. Am I correct in saying that in the Chiefs? They did not lose. So the Bills lost to the Chiefs. The Chiefs lost to the Bengals. The Bengals lost to the Rams. They actually no, no, lost no. to the. Fo- not last year. The year before, the Chiefs lost the Super Bowl. Correct. Correct. Right. So the Bills lost to a team that was trying to return to the Super Bowl. Correct. Last year. This yeah. year's the same thing. They're losing to teams that are playing in the Super. Like, we can't overreact too bad. It's got to be frustrating as hell for the Bills and. Maybe those people that like, I love Josh Allen. He's just such a good guy. And screw Mahomes. He has the stuff already. I want to see one for Josh Allen. He's just losing to great teams. Like, it, yeah, he's losing to great teams. So I don't want to seem like I'm killing him too much. But that's that's my end thing. He's great. Out of 32 starting quarterbacks, I have him at three. But he's got to play one and two or both. Every single year he's in the postseason, it seems like. Uh, any other fallout from this game that you can think of? Um, we'll see how it all goes down, but obviously it wasn't pretty with Stefan Diggs. Yeah, I I, 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 I think expect it's pretty to be clear better. that I, ex- I, I have come to the conclusion. Are together, I, I don't Stephon think Stefan Diggs is an emotional player. He got a little emotional after the game. I don't think that's anything crazy. Uh, in my opinion, the best game of the weekend, the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers, uh, Cowboys come up short 19 to 12, uh, kind of a weird score in a playoff game, but this game was physical. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on in this game. Uh, I'd love to sit here and brag that I was right. Cause I thought I, even after watching this game, I felt like I was on the right side. Um, Niners more, made more plays but I thought the Cowboys were the better team. And that sounds crazy. They shot themselves in the foot more. This game felt very Michigan TCU. I thought the better team lost. Um, Cowboys made every opportunity in the world to lose this game, and the Niners didn't, and therefore they won. You know? Um, Jack Prescott throws two picks. They miss an extra point. 
Diggs drops a gift wrapped interception late in this game. Uh, they completely mug George Kittle on a critical down late in the fourth quarter. They melt down. Cowboys once again lose a road playoff game. Uh, Brock Purdy does enough. He was pressured. I told you they would get pressure on him, but it wasn't enough pressure because he played pretty well, 19 to 29, didn't make a home run throw, but at the same time didn't lose the game. That's all you can ask. He didn't throw the picks that Dak did. Right. Um, Colin said this, and I, I kind of have to agree. You said it the other day, and I don't know if you were kidding or trying to get under my skin, but there wasn't a gap in quarterback play. Like I'd never seen as much as I like to say that Dak's better than Brock. Like I, I didn't watch two quarterbacks and think, wow, that quarterback's way better than the other one. I mean, it was a pretty equal quarterback battle. What are your opinions? I mean, <laughs> You said everything from the perspective of, damn, I just didn't think it would happen, and it did. I would just be saying the same thing from, this is exactly why I picked the 49ers. That's fair. It, it, and, like, it, it's it's all the same facts. I was just, I happened to be on the right side. You know, it it is what it is. To, to be fair, out, the Bucks cowboys is the only playoff game against the spread I haven't got correctly. I've bet on every game that's the only game. So I've been pretty hot this playoffs. And when it came to the 49ers, I, I, I think I agreed with you. I didn't think Brock Purdy would have 214 passing yards. You said he's never seen a defense like the Cowboys. They were going to get pressured. And I was like, I think so. But he didn't turn the ball over. And that was all he had to do. Yeah. And you have the whole team. This is the first time I've seen an entire organization in the 49ers believe in a quarterback. And Shannon's out there. I can't tell you what he is with his arm. and the, He's the most poised quarterback I ever had. He understands what's going on. George Kittle is loving Brock Birdie. I mean, his since he's come in. Yeah. But, um, I think what's going to help them is Brock Purdy has now seen the best defense he'll see the rest of the playoffs. You don't think the Cowboys' defense is better than the Eagles? No. Well, it's close. Okay, but so I, I, <laughs> I mean, close, right? So, so yeah. I, I mean, I was just trying to throw a bone to the Cowboys. Their defense has been phenomenal all year. It has been. It, so, and it was again, nineteen yeah. points on a in, on the road. It's it's so. Good. What I'm saying is, is that was Brock Purdy's top line NFL defense first time he saw it. Like, yeah. I think throughout the second half when he became the starter, he never played a top five defense. No. And he just played one. And uh, 19 for 29. And But that was the thing, too, that I counteracted with Elijah Mitchell, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Kyle Juszczyk. Those are players who ran the ball. Kittle, Samuel, Jennings, Ayuk, McCaffrey. Those are players who caught the ball. Like, they're just so dynamic and so positionless. Kittle's a sixth offensive lineman. Juszczyk's the seventh, and they both can play receiver. They're just it's so much I, mismatch. I, I don't want to cut you off, but there's just, there's a massive point that needs to be made here. You just listed all those people as if they were effective. They weren't. I'm sorry, but Mitchell averaged I, three and a half yards a carry. McCaffrey, three and a half. Samuel, 2.8. Purdy, 2.8. They had one carry from Juszczyk for eight yards. The Cowboys' defense was incredible. What? Dak Prescott cost this team the game. They made bullheaded. The Cowboys lost this game. I'm sorry. The Niners didn't win this game. I think you were on I, the wrong side. I'm not, I was so confident that the Cowboys could take advantage of what would be a rookie quarterback, and they couldn't. Right. I think this is more about the Cowboys here. Right. I'm, I'm just trying to give a little love to the 49ers before I bury the Cowboys. <laughs> and I, I'm not, I wasn't listing those names because of how effective they were. I was just listing those names because most that are on the rushing are also on the receiving. Like they have so many yeah. little dumps and so many easy things that that's why I thought Brock Purdy can handle a good defense, not dominate and win, but again, not turn the ball over. He's going to have so many easy things, even against a tough defense. But when it comes to the Cowboys, there's a reason before the year I had Dak at 16 and everyone buried me. Uh, he, it is uh, it is the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, not Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. He goes as the team goes, and oftentimes he's hurting it. 
I think it was a killer when they lost Tony Pollard. Because that's when I could breathe a sigh of fresh air. I was like, all right, I think the 49ers got this. Because Pop Pollard, welcome to the NFL, finally. Jerry's letting you play this season yeah. all Tony Pollard. Uh, yeah. We'll see how he recovers from the injury. But, yeah, it, it's Dak. I mean, he's a rah-rah guy that I think, I know they can be crazy, but have you talked to any Cowboys fan who wants, like, who likes Dak? He's just Dak. Like, everyone's like, I don't know what we need to do. And I'm not so so sure that they need to, to get rid of him. But, I mean, Zeke's over here. I'll take a pay cut to play with the team. Man, Tony Pollard went down. You had 2.6 yards of carry. Like, you're a goal line back. Yeah. You're a goal he's line a power back. back. Yeah, yeah, he's a power back. That's it. Like, short, line, short yardage. Like, were two great defenses. Kudos to CeeDee Lamb. How he got 10 for 117. I mean, good on you. He – it, they were they, effective in every way. They were effective passing the ball. Unfortunately, Dak made too many critical mistakes. And, and real used, quick, you made a you made a point. I want to ca- capitalize on it real quick. You talked about Cowboys fans not liking Dak. To be fair, I think most Cowboy fans didn't like Tony Romo either. A lot of Tony Romo was like the most like overly hated quarterback in the history of the league. He's like, he gets unnecessary hate, kind of like LeBron. They could just like, why do you hate this man so much? I've, we've never really talked about this on the pod. If there's one player that I think got way too much, is like the most underrated player ever. I, I'm, I banged the table for Tony Romo. I thought he could really play. Uh, I don't think Dak's in that category. I'm not trying to insinuate he is, but I do think he gets unnecessary hate because he is the Cowboys quarterback. I heard something, I think you'd probably agree. Dak Prescott's Kirk Cousins, he just has a star in his helmet. Is that fair? See, I think Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback. They're close, though, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, I guess they're in the same tier, so I'm okay, okay. with that. Yeah. And yeah. some people are listening, they're like, well, well, Dak's mobile and Kirk's a pocket. I get they're not the same guy, like you're saying. They're not yeah. identical. But in yeah. terms of, like, tiering and listing quarterbacks – they are always seem to be like the perfect, like they're always next to each other. If you have yeah. one at 12, the other one's at 13. If you have one at 16, the other one's at 17. Like I, I, I can agree with that. They, they get a lot of stats, but when it comes to winning time, they fumble the bag. And I, you made a point on Trey on digs, dropping a gift wrapped pick. And I was like, yes. And then also I was like, the 49ers dropped a pick six late in that game. Like, dude, under ran the route. I think that was maybe on the last drive, though. It was a little bit different situation. But, yeah, and that that's just it. And it seems to be the Cowboys' bad luck that, you know, they're the teams that are always making the mistakes. And then it has to be terrible on their stomach back-to-back years looking at the last play of the game for the Cowboys last year and this year. That's got to be just like, what are we doing? But – I don't want to – you're going to do. Uh, bury the Cowboys. They suck. They only scored 12 points. Yada, yada. This team went 12-5 and five and won a road playoff game. Expectations can be one thing. That is a massive, massive step in the right direction. You can look back and say – Damn, we might need one more weapon on offense, and we we just got to limit these turnovers. Like, if it wasn't for the Eagles being the best team in the NFL in the regular season, you guys are the one seed in the NFL. Like, it's just like some little things changed and happened for the Cowboys. I don't want to bear them because they had a tremendous year. I just think a lot of the, the killing of the Cowboys is I alluded to Michigan up until about five years ago. I'm around so many Michigan fans that were so disappointed we couldn't do these great things, beat Ohio State, make national championships, win our bowl games. And it was like, I've been alive 25 years, and they've been bad since I've been watching football. Why are the expectations so high? So I think it's the unnecessary expectations of what has been an average team in the Cowboys that have ultimately been their biggest demise. This team took a huge step in the right direction, and you could ask anyone they were one of the best six teams in football they're one of the best six teams in football so there's an argument they lost to the super bowl champs time will tell 
Yeah, and it's like I know what no one's interested in participation trophies, but like, damn man, you're you're a pick or a couple missed kicks, like little things, and that's where you win and lose games. But I mean, you were you were close. Like I just, they had a great year. One last, I'll plug Brock Purdy before we move on. Dog. If Jimmy Grapple plays this game, the Cowboys win. Brock Purdy was running for his life a lot, but was able to move and make plays on his feet. I think Brock Purdy earned the starting spot no matter what happens the rest of the way. Does not matter what happens the rest of the way. I think he's a starter. That's my fallout from this. Um, Jimmy Grapple starts his game, they lose. I think the Cowboys win this game. Uh, Brock Purdy played what he needed to do, as you said didn't make the mistakes, was able to move out of the pocket, was able to get things extended and made the right throws at the right times. I do want to peep myself here a little bit. I want a same game parlay on this game. Yeah. And I texted my buddies. I said, uh, quarterbacks play running backs. It was four legs. I took the under on passing yards on both quarterbacks and the over on their rushing yards and all nice. four hit. It was nice. It's kind of like a funny, unique little thing. Yeah. But yeah. Brock Purdy Dak under on the passing yards over on the rushing yards is Kind of funny to see that hit. Uh, we're on to conference Sunday, unless you got something else. Oh, uh, just one quick thing. Um, the first time you had me on the pod, what was my area of expertise that you brought me on for? The draft. Devontae Smith went 10th. Did he? He did. They traded up with the Cowboys to get him. That feels from high. T- from 12 to 10. And then I think in that I know draft, Jefferson went in the, the Cowboys 20s, took Micah thought- at 12. I know Jefferson went to like 22 to like the Vikings, yeah, but I he, thought Smith did too. I thought he went in the 20s. No, the the Eagles traded from 12 to 10 to get Smith, and the yeah. Cowboys took Micah Parsons at 12. That's fucking bonkers, dude. dude. Micah Parsons skipped a year of college, and everyone's like, what if he can't play football? And I was like, did you see him just kill the Big Ten? <laughs> like, he just yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he's still better than I thought he was going to be. And I thought he was going to be good. Yeah. Mike is a dog. He's, a, he's in a three-player category. Eh, maybe four. Nick Post is pretty damn good, too. It, it's Aaron Donald, TJ Watt, Micah Parsons, and then you could probably throw Nick in there. Those are, I mean, they're by themselves. Ah, uh, Miles Garrett, too. I'd throw Miles Garrett and Max Crosby in there. Max is not in that category, in my opinion. Just my opinion. I, I don't just... think he's there. He good. He real good. He ain't those guys. Those guys are special, dude. I, I don't That's know, like man. me throwing Judon in there. No, hey, Max. The last three years has been unconscious. Yeah, Argument I think he has over day. twelve sacks in two or three straight seasons. That's <laughs> TJ gets that in his sleep. That's why he's nobody's no, in TJ's level. If you're asking me, okay, then stop trying to put Max in there. <laughs> Max is in there. <laughs> Throw a little love to Max. Oh, goodness. Throw a little little love to Max Crosby. Conference championship games, or championship Sunday, as I like to call it. Yes. The winners of these games are going to represent their respective conference in the Super Bowl. Game one, 49ers, 13-4 on the year, traveling to Philly to play the 14-3 Eagles. Eagles favored by two and a half. You got that same line? I don't even have the lines in front of me, but that sounds about right. It's gonna be three p.m. Yeah, it's gonna be three p.m. on Fox. Two and a half. Two and a half. Yep, that's what I got. You want to start? You want me to start? Um, I'll start with this one. Um, Eagles were my Super Bowl pick before the season, before the playoffs, before last game, before we got on this pod, before I started answering this question, and they will be afterwards. Um, I think the Eagles have. So many weapons, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas got it, the running game. I think their O-line across the board is the only one left that's better than the 49ers with Lane Johnson, Mylotta, Jason Kelsey. They're, that's a different group up front. Uh, they can run, they can pass, they can do all that. And then defensively, they have two lockdown corners, big defensive line. I think they can pose some problems. I think this is going to be a tremendous game, but – you know, I've been beating a dead horse here, but when we saw Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott, you said there wasn't really a quarterback difference. There will be this game. And if C.D. Lamb can get 117 yards and the passing game was working for the Cowboys, I don't see a reason to believe that 
the Eagles wouldn't. Nick Sirianni's an offensive mind, and he had one awkward, dumb beginning conference to getting the head coaching job, and then it's been stocks up for the Eagles ever since. They've been tremendous. They have the kicker. They have the quarterback. They have the O-line, the D-line, the veteran leadership. I think they are just built to win this year. Um, There's no way I'm hopping off them. They're the home team at Lincoln. Um, The 49ers could win. I mean, we're talking, let's not even pretend like they couldn't. But I have the Eagles. Let's go by about six or seven. I like it 24-17, Eagles. I'll give you your flowers. You're right. Jalen Hurts is better than Dak Prescott. Um, I don't want to believe that, but you're right. I'll give you that. Uh, on the you. flip side, the Cowboys were better than you gave them credit for. True. But on the flip side, the Eagles were as good as you said they would be. You were True. more right than wrong on the Eagles completely. Uh, I think a team, two teams that I failed to 100% see the absolute ceiling for were the Niners and the Eagles this year. For whatever reason, I wasn't able to see the ceiling for those two teams. Um, but as soon as Brock Purdy became the quarterback of the 49ers, like I bought into how good they could be playing behind him, but I thought they would be limited in certain spots. The Eagles, on the other hand, like it didn't take long for me to see that how good they were, but at the same time, I was trying to pick their demise. I think I can, I can admit that now, like there was times where I was trying to pick where they would fail. Um, this isn't one of those spots. The Eagles are a better team than the Cowboys, or they're at least as good as the Cowboys. They they split this year. Their yeah, records both, were both pretty had, similar. Both losing teams had their backup quarterback, and we never really got to yeah. see it, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't see Dak versus Jalen in, in the top tier. But as you said, they each took each other when they had their backup quarterback. This Eagle team's at home. You asked me if it was the best defense Brock Purdy has played, and I argued that if it's not, this is the next one. They lead the NFL in sacks. I told you that the Cowboys would get pressure. I believe the Eagles will too. I don't see any possible way that the Niners will hold the Eagles to 12 points. That's not even possible. A.J. Brown has transformed the way this offense takes off. This running game seems to be as good as the Niners run game, which is what they're known for. But I like this Eagles passing game more than I like the Niners passing game. And that's the difference for me. These run games are going to kind of neutralize themselves. These defense will neutralize themselves. And I'm taking the better quarterback. I do believe that the Niners had the better coach, but I don't know that that will matter in this game. Uh, Nick Sirianni has yet to it, it's he, Nick Sirianni and Zach Taylor are super close in my opinion, because we don't necessarily think it's the coach, but we haven't seen anything that tells us the coach is bad. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Weird. Is I that weird? I think that's real accurate. Yeah. I like Sirianni more than Taylor, but that's a hundred percent. I like, mean, right on. Yeah. We've well, there's so many reasons like, uh, to point that. Well, he has this and this. He's not fucking it up. <laughs> no, has he? Has he lost? Has there been a gamer like, oh shit, the coach sucks? Not Have you one. seen animosity in their locker rooms? Have you seen arguing on the sidelines? Yeah. Does anything look like it's not in their control from end zone to end zone? Not at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eagles their feel like the play bat, here. Or their players will go to bat for him. Either one. And I. I also like the the Eagles to cover as well. Um, yeah, I think the the spreads are so small that whatever team you have winning, you have them covering. I I mean the spreads are yeah. under a field goal. I don't know anyone that's super confident in a team winning, but only by one or two. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, this game, it feels the Niners finally just hit a wall. That's what this feels like to me. They kind of hit it against the Cowboys. I, I'm I'm going to die on this horse that the Cowboys more or less lost the game than the, the Niners won it. I believe the Eagles will straight up win this game. Like straight up win this game. They're just going to be too much. And Jalen Hurts, man. Dog. I, I, when I you hear him talk in interviews and like maybe little videos and stuff, he's a unique guy. That's He's the different. that's all I've got. He, He's a different there is guy. One yeah. of one for if, if you think that's good or bad. But man, I, I want to bring something up briefly because we argued about this in the preseason, where I asked you how you felt about Jalen Hurts, and I asked you if you thought he was better than Tua, and you're like, yeah, he's better than Tua, and I'm like, well, uh, 
Nick Saban didn't think so. And you're like, well, Nick Saban sucked in the NFL. And you were 100% right on that. You nailed that. I, w- I want to bring this up. Nick Saban benched Jalen Hurts for Tua. Tua ended up getting hurt, and he had to put Jalen Hurts back in. And Jalen Hurts had the poise, the leadership, the perseverance, um, the integrity, everything to lead his team back to. I wish that I remembered the team. It was a big game, and they won the game. They ended up winning. It might have even been the SEC championship game. And Nick Saban literally shed tears because he's just like, I don't deserve Jalen Hurts. Like, that's how, like, he just, he was like, I, this guy is too good of a teammate, too good of a captain, too good of a player. And it's like, I see that more than ever now. Like, this Jalen Hurts, like, the way he plays the game, it's just like. Did you see the full Nick Sirianni, Michael Jordan quote on him? I did. I think, and here's the thing. I don't get all bent out of shape right. if somebody compares someone to Michael Jordan. I just liked how Sirianni was like. He was just so brought back, like, I I don't even want to say it because I know what it means. But to us, to me, he is as valuable as, like, that level. Like, I'm, Lincoln Riley would probably say the same thing when he had him in Oklahoma. And yeah. you look at, like, a game of inches. This team is the best at fourth down and short across the board. And it's like... Jalen Hurts is dropping buckets for four touchdowns a game. He'll run for 18 yards and a touchdown a game. He... I've always ah. said Tom's the greatest QB sneaker in the history of the league. I don't think he is anymore. Jalen Hurts on fourth and one cannot be stopped. It's unguardable. He off That offensive <laughs> line is busted. I know, but he's a dog, too. I know, he but that offensive right line is busted, too. Like, on one yard to go, first down, second down, third down, fourth down, does not matter. Jaylen there was it. one this game, or this this year, where it was, like, fourth and one. He snapped it and, like, leaned in and then pulled out and just ran to the left and, like, ran for, like, dirty couple, like, what, 10, 20 yeah. yards. It was like, what are we even? How do you? You yeah. can't. You can't. We finally agree on the Eagles here. It took a while, but I think the Eagles hey, welcome, are better than the Niners. Welcome. I'm not ready to jump on the bandwagon, but I'm well, taking on this game. I'm just saying, outside of a few people who were Eagles fans, it wasn't that people didn't agree with me. They were looking at me like, how? I will say this. Now, I'll ask you this question. Is there something that did surprise you about the Eagles this year? Because there's something that massively surprised me. It, 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 that, I guess that's why I was so held back. It wasn't Jalen. I did not think that Jalen could throw the ball like he's doing. I knew he could run it. Like, I, I, I had a feeling Nick Sirianni you could mean drop like some one, plays. two, three, 35 yard pass, boom, on the money. I'm talking, it's third and long, and you need a deep pass, and you're going to AJ Brown. And, and maybe it's the AJ Brown effect. I don't know, but the ball's there. At the end of the day, someone's throwing it, and it's Jalen, and it's getting there, and it's caught, and it's complete, and it's you're still nice. moving. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't think Jalen Hurts could throw the ball to the ability that an NFL quarterback is. Like, guess- you argued that he's better than Dak. I'm arguing that he's as good as Tom Brady today, like in the rankings. He's with Aaron Rodgers. Like, we're- you're being well, generous. I'm, I'm just he saying, like, yeah, well, yeah, I mean – you know how we feel about Herbert, Lawrence, Burrow, Mahomes, um, Allen. Then you have, you know, Hurts. You, there, there's guys that I'm going to miss. I don't want to go into that. But I guess yeah. the one thing I said is I was like, I think Jalen Hurts is better than Dak. And that was my starting point. And I was like, with the amount of holy shit all over the field on both sides, this team can't be bad. This team is 10 wins. So I thought they'd be 10 or 11 and would be phenomenal. I had them as the one seed, thought they could be that. Jalen has exceeded my expectations. I have no problem saying that. I, I had him better than a lot of people did, and he has surpassed what I thought he was. Yeah. And that's what made him a team where you're like, well, damn, if he doesn't sprain his shoulder, do they go 15 and one? Like, So um, – I'm not surprised in the outcome, I guess, of them being in the championship game. It's cool to be right because there's plenty of times in this podcast history and future where I'll predict the team to be good and they won't be. 
But um, I had Eagles versus Chargers preseason in my Super Bowl. And before the playoffs, I switched from Chargers to Bengals. And uh, that's our next matchup here. Yeah, let's get right into it. Um, the Cincinnati – ooh. The line moved, ooh. if that's what you're seeing for the first time. Yeah, this line has moved. It's actually – it moved all the way to Bengals, favored by a point and a half, and it's dropped by half a point – after the interview where Patrick Mahomes walked out and he's not in a boot, he was in normal cleats. So they moved the line because of his injury. But then after an interview today, he walked back to the locker room and he had like normal get up on the bottom with no limp. Yeah. So it's like, they don't know what the fuck to do with this line. They have no idea. It, they might as well no, just make it a pick em. It should be a pick em, Well, in my actually opinion. the Bengals are minus one, but the money line is minus one Oh eight minus one Oh eight. It's the same for either team. And you can't you tie can't in a playoff even, game. So it's yeah. like. You can't even get a plus money on the money line, no matter who you pick at this point. That would make no. sense. No. Um, so let's let's go here. It's 12-4 and four, Cincinnati Bengals traveling to the 14-3 and three Kansas City Chiefs. No neutral site game. This will be an <laughs> arrowhead. Um, Bengals are now favored after the Chiefs opened as a one-and-a-half point favorite. The Bengals are now a one-point favorite. Brad just talked to you about how the line hit, went back up and then dropped. This is 6.30 on CBS. This is the nightcap. <clears throat> you started first last time. I'll start here. I have this. I, I don't want this to be what I am viewed as, but I, I'm an unapologetic Tom Brady supporter slash biased fan. And th that is what it is. But I have this, like this stigma against me that I hate Patrick Mahomes. I do not. I do get annoyed and slightly like irritated when people try to pre pre crown somebody like Patrick Mahomes was crowned after he threw 50 touchdowns, and it was an eye roll for me. And I think he won at the Super Bowl, and it was an eye roll for me. It's like, well, when he went seven, let me know, you know? And then Patrick Mahomes' wife basically saying, like, yeah, give him eight years. Come on. Come on. I, I, I went through – I have a buddy. Shout out Chuck. Love Chuck. He's a sport nut like me. More basketball than football, but he's both. I'm not trying to discredit him in football knowledge. But – um. Just a big NBA fan. But anyways, uh, he had kind of tagged me in a post of how Patrick Mahomes is better than Josh Allen. And that, that whatever, fine and dandy. I went through and did my research, and um, I prepared something. I plan on either posting it or, or doing a short pod on it. But basically, like, Patrick Mahomes could not have landed in a better situation. That's what it comes down to. Like, the, the early success in this league, he sat behind a very good veteran quarterback, Alex Smith. Okay. He inherits Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid, and that right there is going to have some success in this league, you know? And I'd argue of his five offensive linemen, I don't know that there's any – if you could put – if we're playing NFL Street and I say pick three, I don't think anybody's got three better than the Chiefs do as a three combo. Uh, their left tackle, their left guard, and their center is as good as anybody's in this entire league. Find it. Don't care who it is. It's as good as anybody's. He still has Travis Kelsey, who's at this point as good of a receiving as anybody in the history of the postseason besides Jerry Rice. Uh, better than Edelman, better than Gronk, better than Randy Moss, better than whoever you could possibly come up with. Travis Kelsey's got him beat besides Jerry Rice. I think Patrick Mahomes is great. I love him. But you guys have spent the last several years trying to compare this guy to Tom Brady. The guy that's comparable to Tom Brady is in the Tiger Stripes. Joe Burrow is the closest thing to Tom Brady that I've ever seen. Now, mind you, their paths are different. Joe went number one. He didn't have that same doubt. He wasn't drafted sixth overall. But it seems like he's that. It almost seems like Joe Burrow's sixth round pick shit started when he was like caught from Ohio State, basically. Like, just leave us. Then he went to LSU and had that decent year. It was kind of doubted. And it almost seemed like that Tom Brady shit took off in 2019. It has never stopped. 
Joe Burrow just seems like he's hit a point where I can't bet against him in a playoff game. I just can't. And the only reason that we took, I think I, we both took the Rams last year is we just felt they were better all around. The offensive line wouldn't hold up. Yada, yada, yada. That's not the case this year. Even with the backup lineman, it seems like the Bengals just have a better, a better thing going, better quarterback play there. I'd argue the chiefs have a better roster today, but I just can't bet against Joe Burrow. Like he's the guy that I wish more people were like, that's the next Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes ain't. I just don't see that in him. He might be the next Aaron Rodgers. Super talented, ultra talented, gets paid a ton of money. That may be it. But when I see Joe Burrow, I just see calm, cool, collected. I see clutch. I see this really weird, humble arrogance, if that makes sense. I know you listened to me for a while there. Say what you want. I'm taking the Bengals by any score. I just right now it's so hard for me to pick against them. They were a team that I was hot on all year. I thought the Ravens would win the division and the Bengals would have a better run in the playoffs. They they had a better division and they're having a pretty good run in the playoffs already. Who you got? Yeah, um anybody can be wrong when making a prediction, but we're not here to like play it safe all the time and say it could be anybody and then just move yeah. on. Uh the last few times they've played the Bengals have won by three. Yep. They they will not this time because I think they will win by more than three. I just think um you said yep. you could make you said you could make a case that the roster is better. I don't think you can. I think the Bengals roster is better. Um I think their run game is more consistent. I think they have more weapons, even though you can talk about Kadarius Tony or Marcus Valdez Scantling and, and it's like, well, Travis Kelsey starts it all. Yeah, well, you could, Jamar Chase starts it all so like i just think these teams are very comparable offensively defensively it's like chris jones and company i think you have tim hendricks you have sam hubbard you have logan wilson you have jesse bates you have a woozy eli apple's even playing well in this postseason i just think collectively as a defense i think this was like the sixth or seventh best defense in the nfl and it's not getting talked about but they kept them in games early when Joe Burrow was coming off of the surgery and having some rough beginnings to the game. And you look at the only two defenses that really gave them fits, and it was when T.J. Watt or Micah Parsons was on the other side. Like, I just – um, you could put Mahomes one. That That's fine. But Burrow's two. Like, there's no – bridge to gap here this is the two best quarterbacks in the nfl i know i know there's people that are that are swallowing an allen pill or it certainly have a case i like josh allen but you're i think you're more right than wrong here who has more mvps in the nfl burrow or allen i mean i'm just oh it's equal oh yeah no no patrick mahomes won one his first year no, no, MVP. No. burrow or allen oh that's equal who has more AFC championship games? You're not being fair. Okay. You're, you're not being fair. That's fine. I, I don't like being fair because Allen's been in the league longer. I'm just saying, listen, that was just a short look. It was just a short little thing. I know I'm getting you worked up, but that was just an example. No, I, first off, I love Burrow and Allen. Yeah. I but know, I just, true. for whatever reason, I just can't bring myself – the Bengals, while I think we look at them as a, a trash organization, Andy Dalton had that team in the playoffs like four years in a row. The Kansas City Chiefs, before Patrick Mahomes got there, were in the playoffs like six different times in, in 10 years. Okay, At one point, they won 12 games before he, he took over. Yeah, the Bills just... have been a mediocre franchise for 20-plus years. And Josh Allen had to take that over with an, a non-offensive coach. We just we're not being fair to Josh Allen. Yeah, we're we're not being fair to Josh Allen, but he's not in the playoffs anymore, so we don't have to talk about him. Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow, they their play styles are different. I don't think there's a bridge there. These are two quarterbacks who are looking eye to eye. There is no advantage. So the people who are like, well, they have Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Well, they have Travis Kelsey. Okay, like Jamar Chase is there too. I I know what Kelsey's doing and has done. I just think these teams are really even. And right now there's one quarterback who's not hurt and I think has 
like you said, there's just something about Joe Burrow where it's like, I will lose the money not betting against him, though. I'm, I'm just not. I'm not betting yeah. against Joe Burrow. Yeah, I agree. I think we mostly agree. Uh, you know, the whole Josh Allen talk, I think we saved that for the offseason because we could go deep yeah, and, into that. But and I promise, as far as like, Joe Burrow goes, I think he's the difference maker here. I've stood on the table like in a different light than you, and I've been on the side of I think Justin Herbert and Josh Allen get more praise for almost beating Mahomes than Mahomes gets for constantly winning. Look, and we're on different sides of that argument, and yeah. there is no one in the gray area. You're either on one side or the other. Yeah. I do think Patrick Mahomes, because those three guys I feel are similar play styles, and I think Mahomes is the best. Sure, we can argue about other things. That's what I think. Burrow is a different style quarterback. Completely. So it's like it's it's more difficult to compare the two. It is fascinating how no matter where Allen or Mahomes are, no matter what their bodies look like, they can mm-hmm. get it 70 yards down the field. I think that's pretty crazy, like their natural yeah. talent. But um, I don't know. These are these are just. I mean, give me these games. It'd be a great game. These are Both these are four great teams. These are four great teams. February twelfth um, is going to be a banger. No matter how it ends up. Yeah, I agree. We both have Eagles Bengals though. And I feel good about it. And if you told me on Monday that it's going to be 49ers Chiefs rematch in the Super Bowl, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean, big be- Yeah, of course. Of You're course, in a championship game. Yeah, I mean, I have these teams. You're playing I mean, for a trophy now. There's a trophy at the yeah. end. You made it. Yeah. You're there. You're two straight trophies. You're winning your conference. If you but win you, this I game. mean, that's a bigger deal than people like to give. Uh, also, shout Bengals. The last several teams to lose the Super Bowl. Uh, shout out the Patriots. There was one year where they lost Super Bowl and they were able to get back. The team that loses the Super Bowl that doesn't have Tom Brady on their team falls off. This Bengal team's right back. They're right back. Maybe they don't go to the Super Bowl. Maybe they lose this weekend. Chiefs. But at least they're competing. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Well, uh, well, I'm just saying they lost one too, didn't they? Yeah, but they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. Well, right. But I mean, but, they've been in the yeah, championship game they, every year. They were, yeah, they were right. But you're right. Shout out Chiefs too. Same you're thing right. with the 49ers who beat them. I mean, they've been in the NFC championship game twice. There's a lot of these. T- the, the 49ers, Chiefs, Bengals, Eagles. We've seen a lot of these guys in the postseason in the last five years. Yeah. Eagles had a historic Super Bowl run and dropped off. But the other three, I mean, last two, three years, they've been in it. Yeah, they're right there down to the end. Yeah, only the – I mean, the, the Eagles won Super Bowl 52 and the Chiefs won Super Bowl 54. Yeah, 54. So, I mean, it's only 57 right now. So, yeah. Um, We both got Bengals, Eagles. I guess there's nothing else to say. Anything else? Um, Shout out, Dolphins. Um, you guys won so that the Steelers missed the postseason, but you guys got your first round pick taken away. Steelers have 32, so it's basically a first rounder now. I love that. Also, shout out to the Bears. Claypool for a second round pick. We'll take the 32nd overall pick. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill O'Brien back with New England. We're yeah. winning the Super Bowl next year. I mean, duh. The Super Bowl. I mean, I mean, Patriots are the best. Yeah. It's literally I mean, Mac Jones, Mahomes, Burrow, and then Allen starts tier three. <laughs> Mac Jones? Tom Brady's coming back next year, son. Lamar Jackson, we're, boy. <laughs> we're, dude, I swear to you, <laughs> I won't be able – you guys won't want to listen to the pod if Tom Brady or Lamar Jackson is the quarterback this year. Let's just say that. I'll give you an arrogant prick. What if you guys sign be- them both? Lamar Jackson at running back. <laughs> You're pitching it, yeah. and then Lamar's throwing it. You're just running a duel. <laughs> Truthfully, like, if Mac's the guy next year, I'm totally on board. I want Mac to work. Obviously, I would love to have Tom Brady for, a, like, a farewell season. Lamar Jackson, I there's a lot of intrigue there, but Mac works, too. I, I don't hate Mac. I'm, I'm, I wish that it was better. I know what elite quarterback play is. I want to know. Mac isn't it. I want to know where your mentality is. You wake up tomorrow, boop, ESPN report. 
The Patriots have traded two first round picks for Aaron Rodgers. Um, I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. That feels like a disappointment, but I think we have a year run in us. I don't I seen the price tag was two first round picks for Aaron Rodgers, right? Allegedly via Peter King. Allegedly. Peter King's a pretty good guy. He my don't miss prob- a lot. Here's my problem. Aaron Rodgers has threatened retirement now for, what, four years in a row? Seems like so, so we give two first-round picks to what? Lose to the Niners? Like Exactly. I'm being an asshole here, but, like, I know. truthfully, we're not – if we sign Aaron Rodgers today, we are not better than the Bengals. We're not better I, than the Chiefs. We're not better than the Bills. I just wanted to bring it up because, like, I know a lot of people have asked me at work. They're like, dude, what's going on with Aaron Rodgers? What do you think? And I was like, option A, he's a Packer next year. Option mm-hmm. B, he's retired. People are like, you don't think someone would trade for him? The Raiders or this or that? I was like, okay, so you got to trade him to the AFC. Packers Raiders can't there. trade for him. Well, I get that. But you got to trade him to the AFC. The yep. Packers said they're not going to the NFC. He's two first-round picks, and next year he costs $60 million, the highest yeah, of Patriots any quarterback in the that. league. Huh? Patriots aren't paying that. There's there's 31 teams that won't and one that has to, and it's the Packers. Like, he's yeah. either retiring or he's a Packer. And anywhere that could trade players and or a package to acquire Aaron Rodgers, that team is immediately not as good as he would be on the Packers. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make sense at all. I just wanted to get my piece out on that. Like, Sure, that would he work on the Jets? Hey, that'd be fun. Send two picks, bring them over to the Jets. You got the defense and all that. But it they will have a one to two year run with Rodgers, and then they will be so far set back on money players they wouldn't have been able to sign, this and that, the draft picks mm-hmm. they would lose. And meanwhile, you have the Dolphins, Patriots, Bills all in your division who are all right there for the playoffs already in a packed AFC. Like I just he's either I think he's gonna be a Packer next year or retired. I don't see him playing in a different jersey. Yeah, I Not know after you're the talking contract he signed. You were definitely talking hypothetically. You weren't trying to call him to the Patriots. Correct. But legitimately yeah. Bill Belichick didn't want to offer Tom Brady a thirty million dollar deal. He ain't pairing Aaron Rodgers double that. Not today. Not three years ago. <laughs> no, Sorry. I don't, like, I don't think happened. anybody would. It was just, uh, I know yeah. you always have a bone to pick with Aaron Rodgers. So I thought, yeah. you know. If it ain't Rodgers, it's Mahomes, apparently. I hate them both. <laughs> per, the, per the stats. <laughs> All right, we're going to get out of here. Enjoy your football. Um, we're out. Real talk. Real talk.